decided to head north. You know, we'll be sailing Tahiti to Hawaii. It's roughly 2,500 nautical miles as the turn flies. There's a couple key islands in the Lion Island group that are virtually halfway between here and there. You know, I've heard legends of the healthy ocean ecosystem and whispers about potential surf spots. It's driving us to go see the place firsthand. There's just something beautiful about being out on the ocean, kind of at the mercy of your own decision making. And the approach is very similar on a sailboat or going in with a group into the mountains. You know, there's no support at all. When you factor in weather, I mean, it's hurricane season north of the equator. It could be five weeks. You really never know. The other beautiful element of this trip is we're going to be taking uh, water samples for microplastic studies in the oceans uh, the entire way up. I consider myself super lucky to have the crew that I do right now on Falcor. Ian Walsh, a good friend of mine, the infamous big wave surfer from Hawaii, a good dear friend of mine from Jackson Hole, Graham Scott. Anything that needs to get done, I'm game. And then we got you know, Amory Ross, who's behind the lens. We got an incredible four-person crew. Blessed, in fact, we're set up for success. And uh, we've got Falcor. I'm ready for a crash course in learning all things sailing. Heading in our general direction north, hoping to catch some of the trade wind that's just above us. I do think we'll find some surf, and at the very least we'll find surf spot potential. Our sail from Tahiti officially became an expedition. Every single hundred miles during our entire voyage, we're putting away one canteen, and we can send this in to adventure scientists who will later test for microplastics in the ocean. Travis has spent a lot of time on boats, and I've put my faith in him as a captain to put us in the right decision-making processes. I'm pretty interested to kind of try to pick up a little bit of knowledge and learn as much as I can. We don't have much daylight and a long way to go. We're gonna put up a little bit more fabric in front and off we go. Man, it's dark out there. Casey shit. <laughs> that kind of natural intuition that comes sailing in the day. You lose all that. Everything looks a little more ominous. You have to rely on your instruments a lot more. You got a hundred here? Yeah. yeah. I got our anchor spot about yeah, 100, 120 feet in front of us. My anchor's dropping, right? Yep. <laughs> I think we got it. I think we're in there. desolate island of Malden. Apparently this place was heavily mined for guano and it's now a marine sanctuary like a lot of these remote line islands. I don't even know if anyone's ever surfed here before. Pretty deserted. Set sail. So now we have like a casual 
you know, day and a half, roughly two days to get up to Fanning Island. I've done a lot of boat trips looking for waves and whatnot, but in the last few years, I've just really had a fascination with sailing and it just almost feels like learning how to surf again. So how many loops on that, five? You're basically gonna ease it out until the sail starts to collapse. I was actually really impressed that he decided to commit to this trip. He's pretty serious about wanting to learn a bit more about open ocean navigation and sailing. This is just a really unique opportunity to see a big part of an ocean I've spent a lot of time in and an area that I've never been in the Pacific. We were having to sail a little bit east to hold the speed we wanted and we adjusted sails and picked up a little more speed with this ASIM spinnaker and now we'll go straight to where we're heading. The first time you cross the equator by boat, you become a shellback. This is a well-known rite of passage for sailors and only Ian has yet to be initiated on Falkor. If you cross the equator on the international dateline, you become not just a shellback, but a golden shellback. What have you to say, or what have you to offer to Neptune to show that you are, in fact, worthy and not just a polywog, land-loving shore dog? Do you still have the fish? We still have the fish. Let's take a bite of the fish. Just to tee this up, I hate fish. So, hate how, fish. kind of a big deal. Golden shell back. <laughs> you gotta keep yeah. going. <laughs> oh, that's bad. <laughs> that's a couple days old. I present you the honor of gold shellback. Thank you. We're <laughs> worth it. We're only like 2,400 miles from civilization in any direction <laughs> if I do get sick. I got a real <laughs> gag or two. <laughs> We're raising Fanning Island out of the ocean. First, to see the sunrise in the world here, the edge of the dateline. The sun rises here, first person to officially see it. This place looks magical. It's the best thing, man, rolling into unknown places when there's a little bit of swell in the water. Looking, wondering, does it go? It's about one o'clock right now, so it gives us a full afternoon to actually have a sniff of what this wave really looks like. Looks like there could be a little wave, a little bit small, but the wind's pretty good. At least get in the water and move around. I'll go try this and see if it's not too shallow. Be careful, Ian. It's really shallow out there. side of the island and on a little scavenger hunt to try to find some coconuts. The classic coconut game. Oh! <laughs> Hands down, sweetest coconut I've ever drank. Whoa. Sweetened strawberries. It does taste like strawberries. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, Project Coconut. Success. We saw a kid running down the beach with what looked like a pretty old surfboard. So we're gonna jump back in and go say hi and check out his board. Surfing literally with no wax.
straight ahead. It's time to go north. We got a pretty decent weather window. This is it. We're saying goodbye to our little left and right. We all have stuff at home that we, we do love to get back to, but it's almost like as soon as you get home, you're just looking forward to the next one. So enjoy the last couple days sail and get on up to Hawaii. Sample 13, Fanning Island. We get to sample a lot of different systems. There actually has been no samples taken on this 2,400 mile route. Sample 13, we're giving it a blue ball. Save. These guys are getting good. Got that wind, man. Slingshot and engage. We're getting close to the start of the intertropical convergence zone. It's this windless desert they call the doldrums. Definitely gonna be pretty variable in there, huh? It's a pretty big storm there in the middle. Yeah. Looks like we'll be going right behind it. Storms never change direction, right? We're ready for quite a bit more wind than what we have now. First reef, good protocol, over trimmed. Way more on our toes because of how much the wind changes. It goes from basically seven knots of wind to 30 knots of wind in about two minutes. Looks like another one setting up right here behind us. I think that's the doldrums giving us a little tip of the hat, saying thank you. Felt like we earned our way through it. Aloha. I think I smell North Pacific trade winds. Feels like the wind in Hawaii. We're trying to come up the south side of Oahu, straight into north winds. But we do have a beautiful view of the Hawaiian Islands that I've never seen. Honolulu right there, Molokai right there, Lanai right there, and Maui in that big clump of clouds over there. We sailed through one of the most remote parts of the tropical Pacific Ocean, and yet we found the vast majority of the waters to be contaminated with microplastics. I'm a big believer that we can leave things better than we found them. I'm drawn to these remote places. It's nice to be removed from the rest of the world sometimes. And it's in these places that I truly feel myself.